So you have a website and you have a hunch that if you make a change, you're going to increase conversions, get more email signups, drive more sales, reduce bounce rate. These are any of the goals that you can measure in Google Optimize. So let's talk a little bit about how to do that. I have a direct to consumer e-commerce website and they make sofas and they have a collections page for all of their sofas and what happens a lot of the time is people come to this page and then they drop off because they think that they see these sofa options and say, uh, I don't really want a gray or a white sofa. And even though I might like the way this looks, I'm not going to click into it because I don't want a white sofa. So I am interested in how we can help people a understand that they can customize their sofa and b ultimately get more people to click in and understand that what they're doing. Now, the way that I learned this about my users was A, the bounce rate from this page, and B, I used user testing to get people to literally tell me as they were searching the site that they didn't realize that then they could come to this sofa, for example, click through it and actually customize it. So let's go into Google Optimize and talk about how we might measure that. So the first thing we want to do is click into our account. I'm assuming you already have it set up. If you have multiple accounts, you just have to click on the one that is with your actual site. And then you click create an experience and give it a descriptive name. So I'm going to call this collection sofas collection page description test. Now, one thing that you want to remember when you're using Google Optimize is that you want to do the most minimum viable test in order to get the greatest results. So when you're thinking about this, don't think about how can I spend 10 days redesigning this whole page? It's how do I get this message across and measure whether or not that message helped to increase the desired conversions. And then you can go and you can make it pretty. So. There are different kinds of tests here. A-B test tests two different variations of a page. A multivariate test tests two different variations with multiple differences. So an, a good A-B test might be to test different headlines. And a multivariate test would be, I'm gonna change the headline and I'm gonna change the image and all of that. So if you have an A-B test, then, or if you have not a lot of traffic, sorry, I'm going to turn off these, then an A-B test is a great thing for you. If you have millions of users coming and to your site, you can test more variables. But I always recommend A-B because it's the most clear. The next is a redirect test. Now this is testing literally two different pages on your website. And then finally, personalization for targeted visitors. That's for example, if you want to reach specifically the people who come in via a marketing channel, for example, or if you want to give them a specific message based on previous actions, personalization is really good. So for this, we're just testing with if we communicate that people can customize their sofas and they have different options to do so, if they click in, then will we increase conversions? So that can easily be done with an A-B test. So you have your name, you figure out your URL that you want to be tested, and usually I just go to the page that I want and then I paste it in to this directly and then you click what kind of test you want, in this case, AB. You wait for it to load, and then what you have is your testing environment. So you can write a description of what you're doing here if you want, and the limit is 5,000 characters. I usually write something really short. Um, for the sake of the video, I might make it even shorter. So um, testing, whether or not it helps, or no, testing if it helps to add a description of how users can customize their sofa. All right, so then you can write that in and then you make sure that your Google Analytics is um, 
in there correctly. If you've done this once, you don't really have to worry about it. And then you can choose your objective from a list or create a custom list. Custom lists are based on events that you have and you can, you know, get really advanced with that. Another one might be a page view. So I'm maybe wondering, will people from my page go to another page? So, you know, would they click over to other product pages? And then I could match with regular expressions to match any product page, which means, you know, basically I would write um, some regular expression to do basically you escape I'm just I don't, I'm not going to get too deep into this but you escape your slashes and then you know and this may not be the best and definitely isn't the best at all in terms of rejects but um, let's see collections and I'm gonna add, so I think, no, wait, it's the, I believe that will be the correct order. Anyway, here we go. One is, so what we're doing there is we're just adding saying any character however many times in between the collections product pages I might have to go in and change that um, yes so that's correct so any page that's a product page because if I'm in this case I'm using Shopify when you click in to any product it always matches collections the name of the collection pro products and then the product name so that's matching that pattern uh, custom uh, objective is viewed product page, save. So I'm measuring how many people in one variant view the product page versus another. So let me just use a listed conversion. So I'm also interested in if we add a description there, will it reduce, say, for example, bounces or and you can add as many of these as you want. Um, will it increase session duration, for example? So then you go in and you want to run diagnostics to make sure that everything is looking right and you're set up. And in this case, no issues were detected, so you're good to go. And then you, I always get email notifications and you can choose traffic allocation. So how many people do you want to see the variance of this test? I am going to do 100% just because it's going to give us the results as quickly as possible. And then you can choose a different activation event. So in this case, we're just testing whether or not this happen, you know, whether or not when they see here the extra description, are they going to you know interact more are they gonna stay longer and so that just happens on page load it doesn't happen on a button click or whatever so you just leave it on page load about 80% of the tests that I do happen on a page load so now that we have all the background information set let's talk about different variants so you want to add a variant and again give it a descriptive name so um, I usually I am going to write descriptive header or descriptive subheader um, because what I'm doing in this case is just adding a descriptive subheader so you end up with your original page and that's the page that you entered in the beginning of your editing event um, and again you can edit it if you get really advanced but for most cases you know URL matches and that's that URL we entered in that first step and then so 50% of the people will see this and 50% of the people will see this descriptive subheader so then you can go in and have fun editing these so Google optimize gives you a really interesting and fun editor you can change you could you just click on whatever it is you want to edit 
and then edit element and say if you want to edit the text you could say customizable sofas click done and then if you want to edit the element edit HTML so it shows you that's an H1 with a collection title as uh, accent and then customizable sofas is that H1 text and then I'm just for the sake of simplicity here I am going to add a you know um, select your favorite sofa and choose from 120 plus performance oops fabrics and leathers we'll hand make any collection or any our uh, let's see we hand craft every order uh, based on your customization I would massage that some more, but whatever. So then you can choose, am I replacing? Am I inserting? Am I appending it? Am I putting it before or after the element? Um, in this case, I am just adding this below so you don't have to really worry about it. So you see here is the text. And you can play with this and make it look nice, but for the sake of time, I am just, you know, showing the easiest fastest implementation here and you know you can really get clever here you can say okay what happens if I don't show this so edit element remove so say I say ah you know I, I messed up you just hit the undo button and you can redo it undo it all of that so say you're happy with this test you hit save here and you can see how many changes there were Okay, and you can see here exactly what you did. Okay, here's this yellow thing. Uh, so it was modified after the experiment changes were applied. So what they're just telling you here is that I should preview this before I do anything. So once you're done editing, you hit save. Oh, by the way, one thing that is also helpful is your CSS editor, and it's up here in this you know in this area so sometimes it's hard to find um, but again you can get really clever here so you hit save and done and it takes you back to your test page here and then when you want to preview it on different devices so let's see what this looks like on a tablet for example there oh so it went back I have some weird Chrome extensions going um, but this is what it looks like here on a you know desktop device and versus this variation so I'm not going to set this live yet because I don't think it looks good enough to deploy, but once you are ready to go, you hit start. So if you have any questions, I hope that was helpful. And if you have any problems or whatever, just reach out. Otherwise, good luck and happy testing.